Hi everyone, happy All Hallows Eve Eve from Peabody Essex Museum here in Witch City, Salem, Mass. My name is Danielle Olson, Art and Nature Center creative producer. I am thrilled to be here with you all tonight for our final hashtag Pemtober event, What the Hands Know with Wes, a virtual artist talk and palm reading. Before we begin, I would like to note that in compliance with current safety protocols, Wes Sam Bruce's immersive installation at the PWD Essex, Where the Questions Live, which we are celebrating tonight, is currently closed. We are diligently working towards our goal of reopening the space mid-January 2021. We thank you for your understanding and we cannot wait to welcome you back to the Art and Nature Center soon. Now I'd like to introduce our two guests for the evening. Wes Ambrose, he joins us from his studio in Brooklyn, New York. Wes is an inter-practice artist best known for his site-specific large-scale projects which pair immersive installations with educational programming and community engagement. Through the use of metaphor, material, and mystery in his art, he prompts participants to investigate their relationships with both their own inner lives and the living world around them. Welcome to Wes. We also have with us tonight Helene Sacido of Handful of Stars from Atlanta, Georgia. Helene is a hand analyst and our expert palmist for the evening. She is currently offering virtual readings, but would typically be providing private readings out of her vintage camper traveling around the U.S. teaching and reading palms. Helene's guidebook and hand printing kit, also titled Handful of Stars, is currently available for purchase through the PEM shop. So you can visit PEMshop.com after this event to check it out. Welcome, Helene. So now it is my absolute pleasure to now pass the mic to Wes, who will be speaking to his use of the hand silhouette in his artwork before Helene joins him for his reading. Wes, take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Danielle. I just wanted to say thank you uh, to you, Danielle, for putting all this together, uh, to Corey for running the back end with the tech, and to uh, Peabody Essex Museum for jumping into this whole just crazy undertaking to get where the questions live um, back up and rolling, and for all the crew that's on the back end getting that exhibition um, just back into a space where we can engage with it. So. Um, I've got about like 15 minutes and I'm going to be talking with my hands as we go through this and I wanted to give an origin story as to how I started to use this hand icon that you can kind of see dashed around in the background over here in my artwork because it's a it was a pretty powerful moment in my life. Um, it happened in 2013 and I was doing an exhibition in Hawaii at the time with the Maui Arts and Cultural Center and I was driving around, um, I've been given permission to go and collect skulls from down in these different specific canyons and gullies and people are bringing me up into their attics and giving me all these old pieces of, of family lore and old furniture and pieces of wood from their barns and I'm collecting bottles from the sides of roadways and I was introduced to these two people, um, Judy and Walter, and they had this really beautiful, strange collection of all these wooden hands. And uh, Judy had been given all of these wooden hands um, by a friend of hers in Indonesia in a place called Sulawesi. And the story that had been passed down to me was that in this part of the world, um, they have this really beautiful uh, way of participating with death where when someone dies, they'll often carve uh, an effigy, lifelike size sculpture of them out of wood and they'll place it in the cliffs above the village to look out over the homes, the family life, the comings and goings of people in the fields. And the, the sacred act is the carving and the placing of these effigies. And then as they get weathered and they uh, you know, have termites and they just start to fall apart, the, a lot of times the first things that will, that will break and decompose and fall off will be like these forearm sections because there's like a movable elbow joint and so you might be walking along the bottom of this big cliff and find, you know, a forearm here and a hand there. And 
she let me borrow a collection of these to place in the exhibition. And then at the end, she gave me one of these hands. And I'd had kind of like a, a really powerful connection with that hand. And I felt drawn to it all the time. And I'll show a photo of it um, here in a second. But I placed this picture. This is like the wooden forearm. And I took my own hand, flesh and blood, and I placed them together palm to palm. And I just felt like this really large rush of energy, like this really strong connection. And if you look at like that place on your hand, it's just like this really charged place. And I felt like all of a sudden I had this awareness of this whole life and this whole story of this worldview, of this time, of this family component, of this imagination from this person that I'll never meet in my current form and felt like it was just like this total download. And I felt this rush of, of knowing from that. And it really tuned me into how powerful our hands really are. And I was, you know, touching doorknobs and like just so excited to shake hands with someone, to put my hand on someone's back or to have someone come up and place their hand on my shoulder. It's like this, this form of greeting, but it's also this really powerful symbol. Like it's, it's also telling someone to stop or to hold something back. Um, and there's all these interactions that can come from that. And I'll, a lot of times I'll keep a, a stone in my pocket. I have this little full moon stone that I keep in my pocket around the full moon and I'll go and I'll place it in the palm of my hand. If I were to come up to you and hand it to you, like this, it's this really intimate exchange if, if something is given to you from this place. Um, so after that, I started to use it as this vessel where the hand will mean different things and different projects. So I'm gonna scoot a little closer and I'm gonna show you um, that wooden hand that was given to me initially. And it's, it's made of wood, like I said, and it shows up in the film that's actually at Peabody Essex right now that I made in collaboration with Ryan Shoemaker and Ruth Mendelson and Laura Catherine. And this is a, a screen grab from that film where I, I snuck that hand in on this bed of moss. This is in Concord, Mass. And then that hand actually sits on the bookshelf in the activity area. And so you can see it's just, you know, sort of this hand carved, hand and then you can see a collection of these this is uh from a portion of the exhibition installation at Maui Arts and Cultural Center and it's on the bottom frame the one that's more the hand that's more shadowed and then there's another hand directly in the middle that's lit and then if you go up to the top right there are a couple other hands that are sort of hidden behind that plant slightly and it's just like this sort of ongoing relationship that I have with it. So I'm gonna give you a couple examples of the way that I interact with these hands throughout just my own life. So a lot of times I'll be out, you know, on a hike somewhere and I will find an object that I'm drawn to um, and I'll just take a photo of my hand holding that thing as a, as a way to connect with that place, with that background. And it's a way for me to sort of just acknowledge that connection to feel that energy wherever it is. These two um, were both taken in Colorado at different moments. And, you know, visualizations of, of uh, pain or damage in connection with this beautiful living world. And then again, just a couple more images. I'm gonna go through these reasonably quickly, but um, just different creative ways of, of seeing what this hand can hold literally and metaphorically as a vessel. Um, this is a, a photo that I took just a couple of weeks ago in my studio um, of my hands as I was going and doing all these, these hand dyed fabrics in here. And if you're on the, the live stream last week, you saw me do a couple of these big dip dyes of this fabric, but I've come to think of my hands as what I like to describe as the, the material exhale to my visual inhale. So we take in all of these different things through our senses, literal and metaphorical, spiritual, uh, as well as just like the ephemeral paired with like this thing that's like bodily and corporeal and visceral and all these fun, beautiful, strange, poetic words. And I was like, oh my gosh, like my eyes can't necessarily make art. My tongue can't make art. My ears can't make art. My nose can't make art. But like 
my hands, this thing that touches and feels and senses things um, can actually like respond. It's like in the way that I think of it, it's the only one of our senses that can actually like make something that is material in response to everything that's taken in. And I will use this just as a way to look at the idea of home and place and the connection between the human imagination and landscape, both literal and metaphorical, um, birth and death and paradox and all these different things coming together and language and growth and output and input and choice and the way that you are connected with your inner world and your outer world. So that piece on the left that has that skull in there is sort of this large mountain that again becomes like a, a holder and keeper of language, of story, of exploration, of the unknown, of pain, of celebration. Um, and then the piece on the right, if you look in the top center of that, it's this little, uh, it's technically called an octagonal tetrahedron. And it's like this little metal mineral thing you might find in the earth. And, as the story goes, you will hear that if you put this next to a compass, it'll actually change what true north is, kind of like a magnet. And I used to carry one of those around in my pocket as this metaphor for choice, that even though you're being led in one direction, you can always choose another. And so I will very often be carrying some stone or some stick or some leaf around in my pocket, uh, just right in the palm of my hand. And I feel like it's a way for me to remember and be invited and to invite uh, a connection to everything that's happening around me and within me. Um, I'll also use it in programming with different youth programs and, and workshops around the country. So we use it as like big backgrounds um, because everyone has this connection to their hands if you have them. Um, it's, a, it's a really all encompassing, universal, inclusive way of letting people make something um, in their own expressive form. And then this was at uh, Mass Mocha out in North Adams. And it's got all these, these, th these are two separate pieces that are sort of like the wings of blessing as you, as you are entering into the space. One's on the outside, one's on the inside. And it was this way of, of participating with the geode, um, this idea that you have like this space within you, um, metaphorically just this little you know, dusty rock that you might see on the side of the path, but not think anything of. But inside it has like just this elaborate crystal system that's been growing in the dark on its own, not begging for attention for who knows how many millions of years. And then in one instant, that rock might be broken open and the light that reveals all these crystals just blasts and illuminates all of that goodness that's been in there. And so this hand reaching out of that geode um, has become a strong practice for me. So I've got like this one in my studio. That's a reminder that at any given moment, you might have this metaphorical geode burst open in your life and to invite that in other people to always be looking for that. It's, a, it's an opti optimistic way of me participating with the inner life of other people as well. Um, just some other examples of, of how the hand will get used in different spaces. It's got a little magnifying glass on the hand on the right. Um, that piece on the left is actually in my studio right now. Little collections of things, little seeds, crawdad claws, bones, um, an owl, talon, an iron pyrite. And again, all of these little elements that end up in there are sort of like visual symbols for me. So I'm not gonna go into what they all mean, but like, all of these things have like this greater lexicon meaning and the hand ends up holding them. So it's almost like the hand is the bowl and then whatever the project's meaning is will get poured into that bowl. And then I can always pour it out and pour something else in on the next day or the next poem or the next piece. And there's a little poem, a little hand in right in the middle of that and that triangle up there. And that's just all of these collected items that I found on um, this big hundred acre property by a, a river in Colorado a um, number of years ago. And this is in an exhibition called The Wonder Sound. And it's, I have this specific photo in here because these hands together, as well as just like when it comes together, when it's a straight 
forward. It's also a blessing. Um, I like to use hands when I, when I will create thresholds or doorways or portals in and out of spaces. And I'll go and I'll, re I'll write messages or blessings or little mantras on the inside of walls often. And I'm usually the only one that sees them because I'll go and like literally construct the wall around that message and then you can't see inside of it but the hand sort of is secretly giving this little blessing to everyone that passes through that every time they go through it whether they know it or not so those messages are are written into the walls literally at PEM and where the questions live and you'll sort of see these hands like there's one on the on the side as you're entering into um, the film space and it's just like it's, it's so subtle, but it's a way to just sort of like pass this on, pass this energy on. And it ends up being visualized in the film as well. Um, in this little scene, I go and I try and touch all these different little lily pads uh, in this pond scene uh, in the swamp. This is kind of out by Concord. And it's sort of this take on this experience that I had at this island um, I'm not going to give the whole story of the island, but like this story of being in the blizzard on this island where all these great blue herons roost and and have their nests and have babies is like so central to the whole experience of the exhibition. But before I even was able to have that experience on the island, I walked around and I touched every one of the trees on this island that's about I don't know, the size of like a basketball court or something like that. I touched every one of the trees, all the stones with my hands as like, as a way of saying like, this is who I am. I'm, I'm greeting you. I'm, I'm letting you see my vulnerable self by being here. And I tried to illustrate that in the, in the film at that moment. And, and Laura Catherine's hands were so captivating to me as she's like working through with her dancing. And we had a quick conversation to, to be as expressive um, as a storm, as the full moon, as she's represented here. And she just did such an incredible job um, utilizing like the, the energy of her hands in so many of these scenes. And then this is Ryan, uh, who I made the film with. And this is Ryan just kind of being a goof when we were installing the film, um, making fun of me as usual. <laughs> and then this is, one of the big cues for having Helene on this partnership is there's this large hand icon, which is kind of a departure from like the, the specific shape that I've been using for the last five years. And this is more of a take on an anatomical hand, but it has, again, these symbols that are on there. And I'm actually not gonna explain what any of these symbols mean on, on the live stream right now. Oops. Um, but you can see that these symbols are repeated throughout the exhibition. They're in the film. They're actual objects that are in the space. But again, it's like it's at the long end of this corridor. So this hand like greets you as you walk into the space. And as you get closer, it reveals more and more and more of itself. And we originally, pre-COVID, uh, Helene, I'm sure this came down to you. We were going to have you post it up right next to this hand. And, you know, we're probably going to dim the lights. And this was going to be... The space in which you existed so we can kind of pretend that you know you're hanging out uh, that we're in here together digitally but you know it's just this long draw and it's it's interesting like when you make eye contact just out and about with strangers uh, there's like eye contact is kind of like the first tier of how you connect with a stranger but when you see like the icon of a hand it's like it's just as ancient like I always like to picture those hand outlines in caves that are some of the first forms of human art. And they have just been a way of expressing like, I am here. And it's this deep, deep connection for human beings to want to be seen and known and heard and understood. And the hand is, is a way of connecting to other people with that, of sharing. And um, I just think it's like, such a beautiful thing to get to have you on here Helene and then this is a little moment where again like this is like so so strange to be in this moment where all of these exhibitions that are literally hands-on um, and an invitation for people to touch everything all of these pieces of artwork that are normally like gallery quality where you can't touch them but we invite people to touch them 
we got to switch up what that looks like. We're going to have a whole protocol of, of cleaning some things you can, some things you can't, but I love this image. Um, Kathy took this and it's like, it's just, just this kid is like, nobody needs to tell you to touch the world. It's, it's there for you to explore. And I love that she just put both of her hands right on this piece. And then I've got this photo of my hands on here. And this is the moment where we're gonna invite Helene to come in and she's gonna read my palms. But I wanna give like a quick um, story grab where I've just have been flabbergasted over the course of this last week. Cause we, we had ad announced that we were gonna have this program called What the Hands Know. And I was like gearing up and I'm collecting all these images of like way too many hand artwork photos from like the last like, I don't know how many years, like eight years, like going through just like this archive of all this hand artwork. And then on the day that we publicly announced that we we're gonna do this program called What the Hands Know, I was <laughs> so stupid. I was trying a magic trick by myself. This is like so only child of me, trying like this really elaborate magic trick in my studio and just burn myself so bad, like right down all these lines, like right through the center of this. And I felt like, okay, this is like so perfect that it happens now. Felt like I've been in like some strange scene out of a Harry Potter film, but also like this, somebody, so my friend Tracy Dunn, who's in Concord, Massachusetts, who literally she's the thread for me to find this island in the first place. I was on the way to her house and I get a call from her partner saying, Tracy just injured her hand. She's in the hospital and we're gonna be delayed for some amount of time. And I pulled off the road, paused and was parked waiting for ha her hand injury to be taken care of. And that's when I found the island that was the island where this whole thing happened. And I was, and she had sent me this message, you know, like an hour ago. And I was just like, what is this beautiful, strange universe we live in with all these little threads? And on that, I'm gonna invite Helene into just sort of take a, a, a overlook at what this is gonna be, you know, for my palms, but she's also gonna give you a little quick intro. Um, for doing them at your own leisure in your home. Again, she has a book um, called Handful of Stars and it's through Harper Books. It's, uh, it's available at the Pemp Shop. You can order online as well to be able to do your own thing. I wish you were in your camper right now doing this, but um, Helene, thank you for jumping in and, and being willing to do this. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And everything you just said, uh, I was just chills a million times because my whole thing is that hands are magic. Um, and I did wanna, you know, you're sitting there talking about holding things in your hands and I'm, you know, got a rock in my hand. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and right. about, you know, how we interact with the world with our hands. Um, a big thing that I talk about in a lot of my readings is seeing creativity in people's hands. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you were talking about making with hands. And I just wanted to share this quote by Brene Brown that um, it just, you know, I thought of it when you were talking, but she said, we are born makers. We move what we're learning from our heads to our hearts through our hands. Mm, I love that. I really love that. Yeah. And uh, before I look at your hands, um, I wanted to talk a little bit of, or just about the energy in our hands, because I think honestly, you would be really interested in that. Yeah. There is a sculpture called the Humunculus. Have you heard of it? It's, no, um, I haven't. It's a visual representation of the human nervous system. Yeah. And um, so the lips are really large, the hands are huge, and the genitalia as well. But those are where our major nerve systems are. Yeah. So right here in our hands, that is a huge hub of our nervous system. And I like to think of that working with our, you know, our. Um, subtle energy so our aura and chakras and things like that and that's why that's such an important piece of our body like that's we interact with the world with our hands um and so just you talking about you know feeling things and like getting downloads you, you're just speaking my language yeah <laughs> i'm going to share my screen so we can look yeah. at our hands and um do your reading and i do wish um that we were doing it in the camper, but maybe one day. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll be down there for sure. Yeah. All right. Let me try to find the team again. Great. All right. Yeah. Nice guy. These are your two hands. Yes. These are your paws. Good. Um, so the biggest question when I do a reading is the difference between the right hand and the left hand, right? So I asked you if handed and you said, yes, most people are. So your right hand represents you um, in the present moment, who you are, where you've been and where you think you're going. The left hand represents potential. A lot of palm readers will say it's destiny, but mm -hmm. I don't necessarily believe that our destiny, our destiny is like written in the stars. I think we're in control of it. Yeah. So I like to think of our hands as a book of our life, like our personal memoir. Your right hand is the chapter you're in now and your left hand holds, um, it's like the final chapter. It knows how everything is gonna go, but we don't necessarily know what's in the middle. Yeah. And you're in control of that. So um, you do have some really cool marks in your hands. I was when I first saw them, but I do start very kind of big picture top level and yeah. then I work my way down. So yeah. I usually start astrology because a lot of people know about astrology right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I look at the elemental shape of your hand and that can end with your, you know, zodiac and your natal chart. But um, ultimately it's just kind of a set of um, like personality uh, traits. Yeah. So you have very watery hands and water is just like in the Zodiac, that's cancer and Pisces, um, yeah. sensitivity, um, empathic, which you just talked about for <laughs> 15 minutes. I feel like you're extremely empathic um, <laughs> and emotional. So, and water hands are longer hands. Uh, and there's other things in your hands too that, that lead to that. Mm. Um, so the next place I usually go is to the mounts in your hands. And mounts are the fleshy pieces that go around like this. So yeah. I had to send me that one really awkward picture like this. Yeah. <laughs> that one always gets people. They're like, how do I do that? Yeah, I was like, how do I take this? <laughs> um, so the mounts um, are personality traits or strengths. And they are named um, after Greek and Roman gods and goddesses. So I have them labeled here. Uh, yeah. Saturn, Apollo, Mercury, Mars, Luna, and Venus. And they are represent the same traits that these gods and goddesses represent. Yeah. So um, without going into all of them, I'm just going to tell you the ones that you have. Um, yeah. A lot of the visual weight in your hands is down here. Uh -huh. And um, this right here is Luna. And Luna is the moon. Um, and it represents all the magical kind of mystical stuff so it's intuition inspiration like deep humanitarianism are you grabbing like a piece that has <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that's your moon oh. and that actually leads to the next one yeah. this right here is venus <laughs> it's like it's love so there you are like hugging your moon and you've got yeah. you yeah. know venus and luna um venus, not, it's not like cheesy love it's like somebody who really wants to experience um, their life, um, people who are very into art, culture, food, all that good stuff. Yeah. So this is all really deep um, emotional stuff. Like if people have mounts that are more developed up here, that's it's a little more practical. Not to say you're not practical, but like you probably live a lot. <laughs> you probably live a lot. Yeah. What's your sign? What's your sign? Your, what is your sign, your zodiac? Yeah. You're a Leo? Yeah. Okay, I, I, I bet if you like looked into your chart, you'd have a lot of watery stuff. Yeah, well, I'm like, <laughs> you're simultaneously like explaining the thesis of the film. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah, I'll send, you the, I'll send you the film after and you're just gonna be like, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, everything <laughs> you said before, I'm like, are you, have you lived in my brain? Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, all right, so we're going to look at the lines next. And the lines, this is all to me, it's reading energy. So I almost like to think of it like um, the lines are like one of those old school lie detector tests that like, you know, uh, if you're lying, they, they sense your energy and, and go up and down. Um, your lines are mostly pretty deep, so we don't see as much as that. But um, when I show my presentation in a minute to talk about plum, you will see some different hands mm -hmm. and it's incredible the activity that um, people have on their hands. Yeah. Just really basically, I look at 
um, visual qualities like the depth, the, the curve, uh, the angle of these lines. And it's, it's very visual. Like my style of palm reading isn't gonna like give you a, like a prophecy, you know, like tomorrow you're gonna move to Bali and, and do whatever. But yeah. um, so just looking at your heart line, super nurturing because it's this half moon. That's um, like somebody who can really hold space, um, you know, for the people around them, very big heart. Mm -hmm. um, headline, because this is curved and it goes all the way down into that Mount of Luna. That is an extreme amount of creativity and a deep connection to your intuition. Mm -hmm. um, if I, if your headline went straight across your hand like that, that would be somebody who's, who's again, practical. So yeah. <laughs> the theme of your reading is just creativity. Um, lifeline, lifeline is not when you're going to die or a record of your life um, or, you know, timeline that is your vitality so like how good you feel in your life and yours is is like truly beautiful there's no marks on it that are like breaks or anything like that so um you have two lifelines though and usually people that are a little more mature or further along in life have multiple lifelines because it's like this is the life we were given or like the vitality we were given and this is um, kind of like what else you can make of it. So a second chapter or a transformation. Yeah. So that's very basic. But when I go over to your left hand, that's where the story gets a little um, juicy because there's differences there. <laughs> so, you know, how old are you, Wes? Do you mind me asking? 35. 35. Okay. So you got some life left, you know, this is where you are right now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, same basic stuff, same big open heart, same creativity. But here's that main lifeline and here's this one life, that second lifeline as like a whole second, like completed chapter. So I don't know when it is that you found art or if you made any big changes when you were young, but this is kind of like, you know, you were given this, but you took this path for yourself. Yeah. Um, and then the coolest thing on your hand is actually my company is called handful of stars because stars on the hand are magic mm -hmm. and it's interesting you have a big star right here and i've noticed that in your art mm -hmm. <laughs> and the stars right there you have it right here in your hand i'm i'm glad it didn't burn because i wouldn't be able to see it but it is like part of that burn chunk right so um a star in the hand again is magic but where it is on your hands is on what's called the line of stability and the line of stability is, it is how you like create your life. It's how safe you feel in the world. It can be like stability in terms of career, logistics, um, and also your goal. Um, you're, where you are right now, you have two very separate lines of stability. One comes up the center of the hand, which is like, I need to pay you know, my rent and my bills and things like that. This line of stability, the second one that comes up from, again, that intuitive place is like, but I want to live an inspired, beautiful, authentic life. So they're next to each other. You know, it's like they're kind of separate or compartmentalized. But on this left hand of your potential, where they come together is where that star comes. It's like a firework. Yeah. So what that means to me is that Probably in the next, and here I go fortune telling when I say I'm not a fortune teller, but like <laughs> probably in the next five to 10 years, like there's going to be this firework of like, it all makes sense. It all comes together. You won't have to compartmentalize those two things. Your, your art is going to support you and vice versa. Um, and that, that's your potential, you know? So, um, that's, that's yeah, that's a, so you, when I see, when I do palm reading, I don't see bad things usually. I only really see beauty. People are like, tell me everything, tell me all the dirt. And I'm like, I don't see the dirt. Yeah. But the, the next thing I want to show you is this giant triangle mm -hmm. in your palm on your left hand, which again, moving into, it's called um, the great triangle or the triangle of Mars. And oh. that's somebody who is, has a very generous and passionate spirit. Mm. Um, and honestly, this was the first time I've ever, I've read this in a couple of years. So that was pretty mm. uh, cool. Triangles on the hands are really signs of strength. Mm. So um, again, if right now you're having any, like, you know, we're all in an unknown right now, right? Yeah. Any, any questions or like, 
you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I going the right place? This, this, everything on this hand right here is like, absolutely, you're, you know, moving into like a truly magical life. Mm. Um, and then just the last thing, your thumb, if you go like this, will you hold your hand up like this? Um, you have the same thumb I do. So the, the, how tall it is, yours yeah. at the bottom of this finger, right? Mm -hmm. that's the thumb of a dreamer and so I saw that and I was like yes ah. <laughs> the, the, thumb, the more like you know kind of maybe determined or ego driven um but yeah I was like he's he's the same <laughs> do you have any questions about any of that or um yeah I don't know what you would ask I would just really the star is is magic yeah t um I break down more this is so funny to do this like live on the internet. <laughs> it's so personal. <laughs> I'm trying not to get too personal because lines do work on a timeline. So I can get really deep into like childhood of people and I'm just like, we'll keep it pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll keep it. And I'm going to like keep it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just going to start crying on the internet. And <laughs> people with this. So, um, so with with that triangle and with the star mm -hmm. being where it is, um, tell, can I just hear more of what it would have meant to be like in a different place or tell me more of like the placement of that, significance of the placement of where that star is. Sure. So a star, wherever it is on the hand is where somebody's magic is. Mm -hmm. Some people have it on these mounts right here. So if somebody yeah. had it on this Mount of Jupiter, which is, he was the God of gods, that would mean that that person's magic was in leadership. If somebody had it over here under your fourth finger of Apollo, that would mean that was in um, you know creativity and or healing. Mm -hmm. um, so wherever it is, um, if it was on some, a lot of times people have it at the end of their headline, that's mm -hmm. somebody's like mental process. Like there's something really yeah. about the way that they think. Yeah. So there's all kinds of marks that can be on the hand and no matter where they are, it, it just kind of like, it's a formula, you know, like, yeah. oh, it means this. And I might talk a little bit more about that, um, you know, the little tutorial. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything on the hand means something in terms of palmistry, the length of the fingers, um, you know, the thumb, uh, you can go as deep as your fingernails and it's just, it can be scary accurate, you know? Yeah. Like yeah um well then okay the last i guess the last thing with it so it's to me it's interesting because there's so much of like a micro and a macro with how time works with this and looking at my hand with the burn on it like there's like a whole a whole life to read right. having just like prior to when the burn happened that is readable still pretty much through that burn but then to me looking at it it's like again, just like trying to figure out all the, again, like not like what does this mean, but like what are the potentials of, of it? Right. Like to go through the heart line, the headline, but then to like come to a point down in the bottom portion of that triangle is so interesting. It's also like triangles have been like a big part of my art practice for like a really long time too. So to have that burn, like come to like a perfect point in the bottom of like this yeah, perfect like point of triangle. Art elements are like right on that left hand. Yeah. yeah. I just said that burn that you are on fire. <laughs> I don't I don't read like freckles or like injuries or things like that. Like you can really drive somebody, you know, make them go crazy when you get too deep into it. Yeah. But the reason, you know, I developed my kit was because um, it comes with ink and then these sheets to ink your hand. And so, you know, looking at your pictures here, I can only see so much a photo, but when you get the whole print of the hand, you can yeah. see all intricacies um, and I even look at fingerprints and things like that because um, you know the thought behind palmistry and the lines um, is that your lines can change over time as you change um, so ideally what's going to happen is this right hand is going to move towards looking more like this hand as you live your life mm -hmm. so it's super interesting I have a daughter and I'm like looking at her hands as she grows up she's I've been doing this since she was two um, and they will, they will change. Um, but as she changes, yeah. 
So, um, yeah, the lines in our hands and our fingerprints, they form five months before we're born. Mm -hmm. And the lines on the hands change, fingerprints never do, which is why we have forensics. So it's just interesting to yeah. kind of keep track of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so magic hands. Yeah, absolutely. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, sure. So um, I, feel like I, I had a friend that was like, so are you going to die tomorrow? Is that what the yeah. burn means? If your like, lifeline is cut off by a burn, I was like, I hope not. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing about palm reading are people are like when am i gonna die and i'm like eventually but do you <laughs> i'm not gonna tell you that yeah you, well, i'm not i have i don't know if you can see it on the back i have this little poster just says not dead yet <laughs> oh, <that's there. laughs> just, also, like another thing it says may the fluidity of water be yours uh, up there too with uh, the, i feel like you just kind of named off all these different things that are that are on the wall up there yeah um, okay love to come look at your studio someday it's like i wish my my walls looked like that but i have pans all over the place yeah you do i can see them yeah um all right so now i'll share my presentation and kind of show um people how they can look at their own hands um and then you'll get to see the differences between you know what your hands look like and what somebody else's hands can look like um so this should be full screen good Everybody, that looks fine, yeah? Okay, so when I say handful of stars and I show you that star, this is what, look, this is a handful of stars to me. Like this is how a hand can look that's just insane. And this person does have that same star that you do, but I'm telling you, it's like super rare. Um, but it's just fascinating to me, the differences between a person and how their hand can look. Um, so I just wanna, I wanted to start off doing some just fun stuff um, because palmistry is more than just the lines in your hand, like that's a uh, common mis misperceptions. So, you know, when I do a reading in my camper, I used to do this whole thing where um, we would play with the hands a little bit. And the first thing I would do is I would test the flexibility of their hands. So if you go like, you're doing it backwards, Wes, you're gonna hurt yourself. If you put your fingers forward, <laughs> and go like this <laughs> so your hand is more flexible <laughs> than mine right like mine is kind of stiff and even though i'm like a palm reader with a vintage camper what this means for me is i like a structured life like i do like a lot of gnomes yours more yours is more flexible so that's more adaptability a little more go with the flow um uh, people that have double jointed hands that's like extremely adaptable like they don't they might not care about their yeah. forward they could yeah. live in yeah. Uh -huh. Right yeah. now my left hand is actually a lot less flexible because of that burn, which is kind yeah. of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um all right. So the next thing that I would do is I would look at the thumb size. So you know, we looked at yours and talked about how you were a dreamer. Um if everyone goes like this and then sees where the top of their thumb hits, if it's at the kind of the bottom of this piece of your hand right here, that's considered small. If it's in the center of this bottom little inch on your first finger that's standard um and then large is up higher so small is a dreamer right in the center that's someone who's got this kind of like balanced amount of determination like you'll put energy into getting something but you'll know when to call it somebody with a large thumb is, is, doesn't want to hear no you know like very i need it my way now um you know mm -hmm. so then I look at the thumb again, like you can read the thumb a bunch of different ways, but you see how your thumb is divided in half by this um, line or group of lines mm -hmm. um, that divides your thumb into the top is logic and the bottom is will and how they are in proportion with each other is how that works in your decision making. So um, sometimes, and you can just kind of like look at it and guess, or you can take a pen and and look at the proportions. A lot of people have a larger top because it's overthinking. Um, I think a lot of us can stew around, especially right now in our um, in our minds. If it's larger on the bottom, that's will. So that would be somebody who would take a lot of risks. But if they're pretty proportionate, that means that you're efficient. So you know, palm reading I feel like can be really practical. Yeah. Um, but this is my favorite part because everyone smiles when I tell them to shake their hands. So if you go like this, and again, I think it's like energy release. Like, first of all, you just feel silly, but like, 
<laughs> yeah, I just like get into it. All right. And then you hold it up, not over straight, just kind of like relax, like you're saying hi to me, just one hand, just like say hi. And now I'm looking at the way that you hold your thumb. So your thumb is like way, way down here, right? I'm looking at the angle. Uh -huh. This is a measure of personality type. So introversion to the extreme would be in. That's like, I'm not letting anybody in. I just want to be with myself. The more open it is, the more open you are to people. So, you know, right in the middle would be an ambivert, you know, like I, I need my time to recharge, but I also, you know, want to hang out. So um, that is actually one of the most accurate things that I do. Um, and it's just, it's all fun. Yeah. That, it's also based on your mood. So if you're like talking to people today, you're like it's open, you know, you're on. Uh, if tomorrow you're like, I've had too many, I've had too much, it, it might be more in. Yeah. So um, now I'm just gonna, you know, tell our viewers a little bit about the lines and just really basic stuff because, you know, you can dive as deep into this as you want but it can be really simple because you don't have to be psychic to read palms. Intuition helps, but it's, it can start very visual, just like people who read tarot cards. You're just looking, um, you know, almost like, you know, art history when you're interpreting, um, you know, the visuals of it. So these are some of the basic um, marks that can be on lines. This is called an island. Mm -hmm. an island can be um, a place of challenge. Um, a break, usually um, a shift of energy, like a change, um, a surprise, a transformation, um, a move, and yeah. then a fork. And the, a fork is, a, is an opening to something. So again, just very visual. Um, yeah. You just learn the basics. You learn the shapes and then you learn where they are and you can start putting it all together. So with a heart line, very basically, like the shape of it. If it's a heart line that just comes across, um, I use the term stoic. That's somebody who's um, a lot of, I like to get into astrology and palm reading. A lot of Aries have stoic um, heart lines because they know what they want and they're not gonna bend. Um, like Mercury, it's a half moon that goes all the way up. Um, usually these people have can have children, pets, like they need to plant, they like to take care of things. Let's see, you have plants all over the place. And <laughs> balance is just between the two. It's usually someone who is a little more um, guarded, but still very open. Yeah. Um, these are just some examples of some hands that have these different, um, different lines on them. So this one is more stoic. This, this one is nurturing, and this is in between. All right, so then the headline. That second line in your hand, yours was like this. It dived down like this, you know, kind of roller coaster ride. That's very creative. There's a, a bend, you know, you're very adaptable in the way that you think and very open minded. If it comes straight across, it's rational, black, black and white, you know, like to know yes or no, um, you know, doesn't want too much extra information. And then balance to something in between. So to look at. These hands, yours was like this, very creative. This is actually my daughter's hand. Um, and I had to like pry her fingers open. But I'm <laughs> fascinated by her hand because she's, yeah. yeah, she's nuts. Um, <laughs> she's a crazy kid. But she has a very straight, rational headline. And um, I know she's very open to things right now, but my interpretation, because this is all interpretive, is that she's trying to make sense of the world, you know? Yeah. Um, and then this balance is in between. But I also just think it's it's crazy interesting how, how different all these hands are and how they can represent, um, you know, who somebody is. Yep. So the lifeline, the one that goes around the thumb, the one that does not tell you when you're going to die, tells you, um, you know, how good you're feeling about your life. And it does work on a timeline, beginning of life to end of life at the end. Don't have a long lifeline. It doesn't mean you're gonna die at 70 or whatever. It, it means you might be working too much. You might be stressed out. Um, you know, you might have a problem seeing where your future is going. Um, but if there is something like a break in it, which I am seeing a lot of this kind of thing right now, 
um, in people around the age of 40 because it's like um, a pivot or a shift in the way um, that they're living. Yeah. So well, that might be interesting to people that are going along with this. So again, this one's healthy. It's just, it's long, beautiful, deep. This one isn't as long. Um, nine times out of 10, it's somebody who works too hard and um, you know isn't giving themselves a sense self-love. This one has more activity on it, which just means maybe life is a little bumpier or maybe they're a little more sensitive to the bumps that they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. And then the last line is the line of stability and just kind of what we were talking about with yours. If you have one that comes up the center like this, that's traditional, very focused on um, taking care of yourself um, logistically in life. Coming from Luna is um, spiritual or creative and then a lot of times there will be a, a dialogue between those two um, and then again like if you put all those marks together you can really put a whole somebody's whole life story together so up the center here traditional up from here very spiritual um, and then this one is combined like yours mm. that's it this is just you know what my kit is it I really I think it's helpful for learners to ink their hands onto the sheet um, and then really break it down with um, my step-by-step -step guidebook. So it's available in the shop. I'm so flattered to be included. Yeah, this is great. This is so good. Thank you so much, Helene, for jumping on and giving me so much good insight.